Hello, Washington. I wish I could be with you for this wonderful evening. But alas, I'm here in London, appearing as Madame Akati in Blythe Spirit. But I remember with pleasure all the times I played your great city, and I'm so delighted by what a great theatre town it has become. I think you will all agree with me that the reason for this transformation is due in no small part to the support, enthusiasm and encouragement of one special man, a man whose unique spirit recognized the dreams of Washington theatre artists and did whatever he could to help those dreams come true. One man whose peerless encouragement of Washington theatre and of his beloved Theatre Washington helped pave the way for the evolution. And one man, an absolute original, who clearly took Oscar Wilde's recommendation to be yourself because everyone else is taken. So, having gratefully received the coveted Helen Hayes tribute myself in 1990, it is with great pride that I introduce, on the occasion of this organization's 30th anniversary, the recipient of the 2014 Helen Hayes Tribute, my dear friend, Victor Shagai. All right, so give me three adjectives to describe Victor Shagai. There are 10,000. There are none. There Excited. Are... Generous. It's incredibly generous. Honest face. Caring. He's Robin Hood. Inspire. Crazy. Very sly sense of humor. He cares an incredible amount about my hair. Sexy. Luscious. Sexy. Hairy. Sexy. The other way of looking at it is to think about Victor as kind of a godfather, trying to keep the horses' heads out of the beds. So, what is your name? I'm Victor Shargai. Now, what was your real name? Oh, Go. Mars Victor Shiraga. And the story on that is the mayor of Jerusalem came over and my father was one of the people to meet him. And he said, why do you spell your name that way? It's the wrong way to spell your name. This is how you should spell your name. And I thought it's a much more interesting name and uh, I changed my name. My first experience was actually appearing in theater when my sister was taking dance lessons and I said, I can do that. And I took some tap lessons and I, I was always extroverted even though I was a loner. Every Saturday, I would truck into Manhattan, get acting lessons. I looked, when I became a teenager, a lot like Marlon Brando. So I would get work, both magazine work and, and television work. My first television work was on The Eddie Fisher Show as a walk-on, and that was because my brother-in-law was Eddie Fisher's press agent. I decided I would go to college and I would study theater. I applied to the Bristol Old Vic and off I went to England. I worked with the soon to be famous Peter O'Toole and one of my schoolmates, his name was Jerry Silberman. Jerry went on to become Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder, before he left, gave me a huge gift. He said, there's a man in Berlin, you should go see him. Bertolt Brecht, I had never heard of him. Good education. So I wrote a letter to Bertolt Brecht. I got an answer. I was invited to the theater to stay with them for a week. I was given an assistant director to be my host. He smelled of garlic the entire time, and I can't eat anything with garlic. Came back to America. I started a season of summer stock at the Phoenicia Playhouse in uh, Phoenicia, New York. I was also doing costumes. Somehow I took it upon myself that I could be a costumer. And one morning I woke up and decided, I don't think I'm going to act anymore. But I uh, thought I might do costume design. I went to work for a man named Ray Diffin, the greatest costumer of his time. I got to work with uh, Florence Henderson and perhaps the most joyous with Barbara Streisand. Anyway, one day backstage, I fell down the steps and I twisted my ankle so badly that I couldn't walk. A few weeks later, I came home to our apartment and I look up. It was all black. We lived on the top floor of a, a building and the man next door who was an alcoholic who owned a bar had fallen asleep and burned himself to death. 
Well, I said, this is it. This is really it. And John had had an offer a year before to move to Washington. And when the, these things happened, I said, I'm leaving New York. I'm leaving the theater. And I did. I arrived in Washington and I went to a store called Sloan Mayer. Within a year, I was the leading person in the store in the design department. Within two years, I was leading the entire nine or 10 branches across America. I came to Washington just when they were doing some of the great buildings like the Colonnade. So within three years, I was in the top design tier of designers in Washington. It was so fortunate for me. But then there was the theater. I met a woman and she kept trying to get me involved in an organization they were just starting called the Helen Hayes Wards. And one day he, he says I stopped him. I say he stopped me in the middle of the street. They came to, well, what are you doing? And I told him what I was doing. And he said, I think we need to talk. I think truly he wanted to be a leader. And if you look at the Washington Theater in 1987 and Washington Theater now, one of the largest ways I think he has, he has assisted it, he has, he's moved it forward, is by encouraging the smaller theaters, the new theaters, the, the people who wanted, who didn't have big budgets. He has championed it like no other. He has promoted it like no other. He has supported it like no other. He brought other people to the theater and he actually made the family bigger. He brings in groups of children that normally couldn't afford to go to the theater, along with their parents. He, he sends, he's an advocate for the arts. But he then could be engaged on a day-to-day, moment-by-moment, all the glory and the drama and the joy that he had craved from his very youth. I don't know why it's making me cry. Helen Hayes loved Victor. One of the favorite things she loved to say, I'm not an actress anymore, I'm an award. I think theater is, of all the performing arts, the most approachable, and there's a warmth to it. In the past years, when I have a new person in my life, when I have Craig, I found myself opening up a little more to new things. And now I go to Wooly and I say, God, Howard, that was really a strange play, but I loved it. And you learn a lot about yourself from the theater. All right, so is there anything else you want us to know? I can still tap dance a little. <laughs>